What's going on everyone? My name is Will and you're watching Northwest Aqua Hobby. In this video, I'm actually gonna be doing a fish store tour for you all and I couldn't be more excited about this one. This store is about 10 miles from my house. They just opened up and the quality of their fish is absolutely incredible. So guys, I think the plan for this video is we're gonna go ahead and introduce you to the store owner. His name's Jason. He's gonna tell you a little bit about himself and the store and then we're gonna walk around, take a look at some fish, some of the hard goods and things like that. So let's go ahead and jump right into it. Hey, welcome, my name's Jason. This is Redfish Bluefish. This is a shop here in Green Bank, Washington. Uh, this is our third week open, so early days. Um, this is kind of what you get when you're 50% in love with cool, rare and semi-rare freshwater tropical fish and 50% in love with planted tanks and aquascapes. Let's have a look. Sounds good. All right, Jason, so do you wanna show us around the store here, some of your favorite fish maybe to start? Yeah, awesome. Uh, so we're big time into epistogrammas, which are a dwarf South American cichlid, uh, exclusively from South America. There are no known Central American uh, epistogrammas. And we are in love with them here. We've got tons of them. Um, this is a really interesting tank here, tank number 56. Um, this is an aquarium full of Epistogramma sp rotpunkt, which is a very, very uncommon and rare Episto. Um, it's a member of the Alacrina, I guess you could say family of Epistogrammas. And they're interesting in that the males are the ones that turn really yellow. Oh yeah, is this, is this a male here? Yeah, this is a little male here. Now the name uh, Ruppunkt uh, in German means red point or red dot. And what's gonna happen to him is that as he gets a little older, he's gonna get really brilliant yellow. He's gonna get these red spots all over him, which is very strange for an epistogramma, you know? <laughs> sure. And they're in there actually with a, a tank full of red laser tetras. Okay, cool. So those are a very strange kind of bizarre tetra from South America. When they're kind of in the breeding season, they'll turn really bright pink and that line down their middle will just be like a red laser, hence the name. Nice. Um, so where were these guys uh, picked up from? Uh, these guys were tank bred in the Czech Republic. These guys here, these epistogrammas. Okay. Now these red laser tetras were almost for sure a wild caught. They, nice. they came in from the Czech Republic. Okay. So do you get a lot of your fish from the, the Czech Republic? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Well, we import only from Europe. We're, we're yeah. strictly European importers, and that goes back to kind of my, my beginning in the industry sure. and the hobby. Um, I come from Texas, and a long, long time ago, in my teenage years, I went to work for an outfit in Texas, and they were big importers, exporters, freshwater, saltwater. Nice. And uh, I realized really early on uh, that um, the quality fish with superior pedigree, yeah. awesome colors, healthy beyond healthy, always came from Europe. Sure. Yeah. Um, and I, I just kind of learned my lesson then early on that yep. if, if you want the cheapest fish, then Asian exporters are going to be for you. Um, but the quality control is is usually not there that right. I look for. So okay. that's kind of why we always go for uh, European imports. Right. Uh, I also work with some American breeders, especially okay. with live bears and guppies. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the cardinal tetras that I got from you, those were from the Czech Republic too, yeah. right? Yeah, those yeah. were tank bred by Czech yeah. breeders, yeah. The Czechs are, are basically right up there, like neck and neck yeah. with the Germans. They're really, really, they're, they're in close competition. Cool. Now I do have some German fish as well. Um, these are really interesting fish. This is Epistogramma nishtini. Oh yeah, wow. I like their, their darker colors and the tail. Wow. Yes, you know what really appeals to me in this fish? It's the shape of their nose and their head. They kind of remind me of like school buses or like yeah. air, Airbus airplanes, you know? Sure, yeah. They're, they're kind of not shaped like your typical Epistogramma, which I, which I find interesting. Again, your yellow ones, your small yellow ones that have a really like a heavy yellow tint with a patch. Oh, that's wow. going to be a female. That's yeah, a female. That's cool. Male, male, male. Most likely female. Some, you yeah. see, like this one, it can go either way. Wow. Yeah, I often cool. get requests for pairs and uh, uh, we try our best. <laughs> we try our best. Yeah. Cool. And then these stands. So did you build these stands yourself or? Yeah, yeah, we, we built these, I, I built these stands uh, myself. These are dado stands, dado racks. Yep. And uh, 
I had to learn how to build them because we had no choice. Uh, sure. We basically started opening our shop right at the heyday of the you know the pandemic. Right. Uh, so so much that um, that I took for granted before that you can just you know oh we'll just commercially get it somewhere that stopped yep. uh, during the pandemic. So basically all the racks in here were hand built. Uh, yeah. Hand built. So it looks like uh, two by four construction, and then you got like deck screws. Yep, two by four construction, deck screws. Measured everything really, really nice with my table saw. I, I actually yep. purchased a table saw just for this product uh, project. Cool. And, uh, yeah, so uh, dados, you know, the, the basically um, it's a principle of wood stacked on top of wood, yeah. stacked on top of wood, stacked on top of wood, and it's all screwed together to uh, uh, to an unbroken single piece, what we call a spine. Okay, yeah, I see what you're talking about. Yeah, these are really similar, I think, um, construction-wise to the ones that I've got in my plant farm. Yeah, yeah. Um, I mean, you can put a car on these things. Oh, they, yeah. They can hold a ton of weight. <laughs> yep, if the two by four, won't get crushed, then uh, yeah, it's gonna hold pretty much maximum weight. Absolutely. Cool. We so, also have some uh, other interesting fish. I don't know if you wanted to see some of these koi sankes. These sure. are uh, very, very interesting, uh, fairly new strain of swordtail um, oh, wow. out of the Czech Republic. Uh, they're really, really interesting. That orange is incredible. Yeah, aren't they? I mean, just wow. And some of them have little, like, little white tips on their noses, and <laughs> there's just so much character. Nice. How many uh, tanks in total do you have here? Uh, we have 68 aquariums right now. Okay. And uh, interestingly enough, like you could sort of draw a line here and all of the aquariums are that way in about, I don't, I don't want to say, probably 250 square foot of space. Okay. Which yep. is, you know, pretty impressive. We were yeah. happy to pull that off. Um, yeah, no kidding. We have a lot of our aquariums uh, set up on a kind of a... Uh, uh, with the skinny side facing out. Oh yeah. Like this. Yep. Um, in fact, there are 15 aquariums here and 15 aquariums over there like that. Wow. And we kind of built it in a uh, in a 90 degree angle here to um, sort of conceal our water plant. Okay. Yeah. Nice. And I'll cut to some B-roll for that. That's a cool setup you got back there. Yeah. It's a. It's a. I think I want to say it's a 270 gallon IBC tote. Yep. And it's got a, a RO unit on it. Um, I think its its output is 600 gallons per day, something like that. Okay. Um, it does less than that because we put the the higher efficiency, I guess you could say, less wasteful attachment on it. That sure. bumps, bumps bumps it down a little bit. Cool. But uh, it does more than enough for us. And then for uh, filtration, it looks like you're doing mostly air for most of the tanks. Or yeah, right? yeah, we do mostly uh, air-driven sponges. Uh, these larger aquariums uh, have hang on the backs, but um, we can have a look at our uh, linear piston air pumps if you sure. like. Sure, yeah, let's take a look at that. We've got it distributed through these manifolds up here. This is actually a, a silencer oh, okay. and a valve that controls it. So the idea is... Um, if you're not running enough air pumps for your linear piston, you know, pump, uh, you'll eventually burn it up because one of the functions uh, of the air leaving is not just to keep your fish alive and your filtration running, it's also to carry heat away from the pump and they will overheat. So this allows you a way of releasing air, excess air, and silencing it at the same time so nice. you don't hear this constant hiss, yep. which is very annoying. Yep, that's a good setup. So back here we have our linears. So we run two pumps for redundancy, just in case. Uh, this is far. This is twice as many pumps as I really needed. Sure. But the idea is, you know, worst comes to the worst. If one of them burns out, uh, we can rig something up and run all of these on, on one pump. Cool. So it's really for redundancy. Nice. Yeah, I like running air for my tanks too. Yeah, absolutely. It's, it's yep. cheap. It, it's cheap. I mean, sponge filters aren't the nicest thing to look at, but they definitely eat ammonia. Yep. Awesome. So this is where our uh, pipe comes out, you know, through this cobweb of electrics. <laughs> and it goes up here and meets the manifold, and that's it. Yeah. No, I got to say, I'm, in, I'm impressed with your ability to keep all of the cords and tubes <laughs> yes. uh, organized. That's halfway impressive. Halfway organized. Halfway organized, yeah. yeah. Luckily, our lighting system that is also DIY, um, we also had to kind of build that thanks right. to the pandemic. Yep. Um, it's 12 volt, so it's okay. very, very low power. It's very safe. And it uh, it also features these little variable 
light control knobs. Oh, so wow. we can actually dial them up, make them really bright, make them kind of not That's so cool. bright. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, each light bar has its own control. Nice. So while it makes for uh, quite a few cables, it definitely gives us that kind of granular control we wanted. Awesome. So Jason, tell me, you're you're on YouTube too, aren't you? Yeah, yeah. I've been on yep. YouTube for a little bit over a year now. Okay. Yeah. And what's your uh, your channel name? Uh, same as the shop, Redfish yep. Bluefish. Cool. I'll yeah. put a link in the description for folks if they want to check out your channel. I appreciate it. Man. Cool. Thank you. So you also sell online, right? I do. Yeah, we're also yep. at redfishbluefish.shop. Uh, we've got a fully functional website. Um, virtually all the fish that we sell in here, we will ship online. There are a couple of exceptions. Okay. Uh, there, we, we do sell a couple of pretty expensive classic bad shippers. Mm -hmm. uh, unfortunately, um, we can have a look at one of them if sure. you like. It's a yeah, very rare look. Tetra. These are double veil tailed neon Tetras. Oh yeah. That came from the Czech Republic. These were tank bred in the Czech Republic. And I don't have any filtration running right now. And I think they, they kind of appreciate it because they're enjoying the just chilling out. Oh yeah. Yeah, I bet a lot of those fish that have more of a, you know, the larger tails, they like less flow. Yeah, yeah. And uh, you know, one thing, you know, when you see a fish, I mean, everyone's kind of seen a neon tetra. Neon tetras don't look like that. They shouldn't look like that. They're, they're not supposed to have really long fins. Um, this is a sign of inbreeding, selective okay. breeding and yeah. inbreeding. That's, that's how we get the guppies that we love. That's how we get these veil tails that we love. Some people really like the bubble body fish. Mm -hmm. It's the same thing there. So the problem with that is that um, with inbreeding and selective breeding, um, typically the fish kind of gets weaker in terms okay. of health. And that's definitely apparent uh, when it comes to shipping them. So in the store here, I see you've got some plants as well. Yeah, yeah, uh, we do carry some plants. Um, like I said, we've only been open, this is our third week. Uh, we do carry some swords and some, some other, you know, some nice, uh, we got some bulbitis, some cardinal plant, Japanese pennywort, you nice. know, that, that sort of thing. Yep. Uh, but the plant, uh, the plants are very much kind of a work in progress. Sure. Um, we're going to be, um, I work with my own tissue cultures uh, on a very small scale. So that's kind of, a, it takes a little while to get going. Uh, what we're gonna be doing is uh, tissue culturing mainly our own stems. Sure. And then plugging stems into our tanks with CO2 and water column fertilization. Cool. You know, and, and letting them pop for a couple of weeks and then yep. putting them on the market, so. Awesome. That's kind of similar, that sounds familiar, right? Yep. <laughs> cool, yeah, I've never really experimented, surprisingly, with uh, CO2. So you've had a lot of success with CO2 and. Yeah, absolutely, yeah, CO2 yeah. is, uh, it's it's a it's a controversial subject that shouldn't be controversial. You know, right. It's just another tool for you to use. Like yep. some people don't do water column fertilization. Sure. Some people don't even do aqua soil. Some people are into the sand capped or gravel capped dirt. Yep. These are all perfectly valid, you know, ways to grow plants. Absolutely. But it doesn't really make sense to me that the CO2 one should be so controversial. Sure. Uh, yeah, well, if you look in, in the wild, there's CO2 and it naturally occurs, so. Absolutely. Of course, some, it should be there. <laughs> as you well know, you well know, a lot of plants have long ago evolved to actually utilize carbonate as a source of carbon when they need to. Absolutely. Other plants don't do it so well. Yep. But yeah, Valisneria is one of those, right? Exactly. Yeah, yeah Val is one of those. And carbon, I mean, everyone knows carbon yeah. is a building block of life. Absolutely. Yeah. So. so you've got some uh, hard goods over here as well. You want to oh, walk yeah. us through what you got over here? Yeah, we can have a look over here. Um, Ooh, so, ADA tanks. Yeah, like I said, nice. uh, we're, we're big time into the aquascaping. We love our sure. plants. And, uh, you know, 50% of the shop is kind of a local fish shop with some rare and unusual stuff in it. The other 50% is all about this. The planted yeah. tanks, the aquascapes. Wow. Yeah. Got a bunch of stuff from ADA. This is black forest wood. Oh, cool. Yeah. It's really nice. It doesn't really dump any tannins at all into the water. It does float yep. like most wood. Um, so you got to waterlog it? Yeah, so you got to waterlog it. Often just, you know, tie it or glue it to something. Sure. But uh, we, yeah, we got a selection of uh, the hardscape here and there. We've got some stones here. Uh, we should have even more stones here. Yeah. <laughs> But uh, you see, uh, some of the supply issues do persist. Sure. What kind of stone is this? Is this 
Dragonstone? Yeah, or? this is a bunch of Dragonstone we yeah. picked up. Yeah, nice. it's actually pretty nice. We got a great deal on it. Yep. We got a really great deal on it. We decided to pass those savings on at only $2 a piece. Awesome. The larger pieces are four dollars you know so cool yeah so if you're local um you can certainly swing by and you can get yourself started with the beautiful tank and some driftwood and hardscape you got everything you need here oh yeah absolutely we we made sure to bring in different sizes and different grades so you can do stuff like this you know if you don't cool. see something that jumps right out at you right you can get a couple of pieces and just sit here and kind of play with them and say, you know, how's, yep. how can I put this together? Can I can I make this longer? And uh, right. a little bit of time and ingenuity, it's really easy. Yeah, absolutely. So then over over on this side of the store, you've got your kind of aquascaping, you got soil. Yeah, we've got our uh, aqua soils. Uh, we're big fans of Brightwell Aquatics. Um, great company, you know, kind of founded, started here in the USA. Um, they actually started off with marine saltwater stuff. Oh, no kidding. Okay. Yeah. They, they, they had a real big place in that market. But the people that own it and run it are basically engineers and chemists. Okay. And uh, So this one, is their line? Yeah, this is their line. One reason why I really love uh, this Brightwell Aquatic substrate, it's great for plants, great for shrimp. We've got it in brown and black. One reason why I love it is that you can put animals in there right away. Okay. There's absolutely yeah. no ammonia or nitrogen that leaches sure. out of it. That's a, we carry a full line of uh, Brightwell Aquatics fertilizers. This is their uh, kind of chlorine ammonia remover. Sure, cool. And then it looks like you got some uh, selection of lights here as well. Yeah, we do. We've got some Stingray 2s. Uh, they make a really great light out of Taiwan for a, yeah. for a good price. Cool. And uh, we've got, you know, of course, the uh, the Nano, the good old Fluval Nano. Yep. We've got some of these clip-ons <laughs> as well. You know, once in a while, people come in here with an odd-sized tank, and they don't need a ton of light. Um, this is a great solution. It just kind of bolts right just onto the side. On, yeah. Cool. Yeah. It's a really, nice. good, really good solution. And some more driftwood up here, too. Oh, yeah. We've got some new <laughs> selection of driftwood. We got these in from Florida. They're actually pretty nice. Some nice. Pacific wood. And we've got some of this... Uh, this is actually more suitable for for a dry scape. Okay. I'm not sure it would put this in water. It's it's pretty soft. It definitely would give you a, a nice red tinge if you're looking for yeah. that. <laughs> cool. Awesome. Then you got some uh, some other supplies here. Looks like some CO2 stuff and medications and things like that. Yeah, we've got uh, bubble counters, diffusers. We've got medications. Yes, we do actually carry meds. We don't carry the uh, herbal extracts that typically don't work quite as well as the actual meds. Um, there has been a major shortage in medication, so we're lucky we got that. Of course, you know, filter media to replace, um, we're, we're a big fan of the Tidal series, we sell sure. those. You know, your typical gravel vacs and yep. water test kits. Stuff awesome. you gotta have. Yep, all the staples. <laughs> and then over here, we've got our filtration. Uh, Forgive the stack of equipment here. Um, maybe we should talk about that for sure. a minute. Yeah, we got, we got a stack of ADA equipment here. Um, this is actually going to be our aquascapes that are going to be along this wall. Oh, cool. How many are you going to have set up then? Uh, initially, we're going to put three in here. I was going to do five, and I think right now we're just going to stick with three on this wall. One here, one here, and one here. Okay. And I think that's because we need some shelf space here and some additional shelf space here to get more hardscape in. Gotcha. Um, we're yep. kind of short on shelf space right now. But cool. anyway, this is the equipment that we're gonna use for our, our lovely um, aquascapes. And we would really like to have a kind of like a low cushioned ottoman, like a seat oh, yeah. in front of each one. Yep. So people can come in and just kind of relax. Yeah, that'd be awesome. <laughs> yeah, soak it in. Anyway, like I was saying, we're a big fan of the Seachem line. Uh, they're easily the best hang on the back filter I've ever used. Uh, I love the little integrated um, surface skimmer that they have. That was a really oh, good nice. design. Yeah, see these oh, little okay. slots yeah. here are actually surface skimmers. Yeah, and this cool. little blue dial here kind of adjusts how much. Oh, nice. So it's really, it's it's actually kind of two devices in one. Yeah, that's handy because I, you know, when I was having um, hang on the back filters yeah. without an air stone, you'd get the, the biofilm to accumulate, yeah, so that's cool. Absolutely, yeah, that's we've awesome. got some of it even going on here, so we're not yep. immune from the biofilm. <laughs> <laughs> yep, it plagues us all. <laughs> but Oaza, uh, I'm also a big fan of Oaza. They make great filtration. Um, I went with, because of where we live, it's a little chillier up here, I went with the uh, thermos. 
Okay. Which basically is their um, external canister filter that has the heater integrated into it. Oh, no so, kidding. Yeah. 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 Cool. It's, uh, I, they're really convenient. They've got these two clips and they just, everything comes out just really easy to clean. Nice. Of course, we carry a selection of foods. Um, this is a food we're really excited about, um, P.E. Flakes. Um, P.E. Flakes is uh, manufactured by Piscine Energetics, and they're based out of Canada. Um, the primary ingredient is uh, Lake Okanagan um, mysis shrimp, oh, which, are, which are incredibly yeah. invasive and bad. They shouldn't be there. Yeah. Um, they were put there to help <laughs> deal with um, with some, some um, things that were feeding on the phytoplankton in the water, okay. right? which impacted the kokanee, kokanee, baby kokanee sure. eat phytoplankton, right? Yep. So mice and shrimp were placed in there to take out the bad stuff. And unfortunately, mice and shrimp go straight to the bottom and live there. And that lake is very deep. Right. So there were no predator fish down there to feed on them. Yep. Oops. Well, luckily we have this company, Piscine Energetics, that kind of made a deal with the government. What they do is they, at night, they harvest all the mice and shrimp out of the water column and turn it into a food. Wow, well and that that's, keeps them in check. And what a good use to uh, put those invasive species to a you know beneficial use. Exactly, right? let's turn them into a delicious meal. Yeah, cool. <laughs> awesome. And then back here, looks like you got a. Oh yeah. Another. Yeah, we got uh, more Piscine Energetics pellets. We got yep. plenty of hikari. Um, the, uh, the secret weapon of any bottom feeding fish, the hikari sinking wafer. <laughs> that's a huge seller here. You know, algae scrapers, air stones. Nice. We've got some Owaza heaters, some Fluval digital heaters. Awesome. You know, algae magnets. Yep. All that good stuff. Tweezers for your aquascaping, snips, that yep. kind of thing. Awesome. Well, so so folks, if they want to pick up fish, they can check out your website and they can pick those up online. And then if, if you guys are local to Whidbey Island, the Seattle area, then you can stop by here and pick up pretty much anything you'd need for a, you know, setting up a new tank or spicing up one of your old ones. Um, anything else that you wanted to cover? I think that's about it. Um, a lot of this shop is, is a work in progress. It has been sure. from day one, we had to DIY everything. Yep. Uh, thanks to supply supply right. problems <laughs> but yeah. uh, i really appreciate you coming by and hanging out with us hope to see you back yeah absolutely i'm really impressed with what you guys have done here um i mean you just pretty much opened up overnight it seems like and i couldn't be more enthused to have such a quality fish store just local to me that's cool we really appreciate it thanks yep. for coming by hope yeah. to see you back you bet take care all right take care yep all right, everyone, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. It's something a little bit different for my channel. Uh, big thanks to Jason over at Redfish Bluefish. Again, guys, if you're interested in checking out his website, I'll have that linked in the description below, along with his YouTube channel as well. He's got a lot of great content over on YouTube, so check that out also. And then, guys, also, if you're in the market for some aquarium plants, I do sell aquarium plants on my own website, and I'll have that linked in the description as well. As always guys, I appreciate your time. If you're new here, make sure to give this a like and subscribe to my channel. I release new content each and every week. Until next time, catch you guys in the next one.